everyone. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you from wherever you're listening to this uh, message from. Um, I hope you're good. I hope you are doing great. I hope um, you are keeping the faith and I hope um, you are trusting God for the best and I hope um, you are not losing your praise and I hope, um, you know, you are not quitting on God you know, don't you ever give up on God. Just um, as the revival is huge, you know, um, so also a whole lot of people, their faith is shaken, you know, um, as a result of the times, you know, that we are in. So I would say this, consider, uh, considering the times that we are in, um, you just keep clinging, you know, to the word of God, keep your faith in God, um, strong, you know, stronger. And, um, I will encourage you to keep, um, your relationship with God intact and, um, just keep trusting God for the best. Amen. And just know that irrespective of what you're going through, that, um, God will always be there to preserve you and to keep you and, um, to bring you out stronger and to, you know, help you pull through it. Amen. So, um, I just want to encourage you today. <laughs> I just want to encourage someone today to, you know, stay strong and make sure you don't compromise your faith. Um, especially in the times that we are in that it, it is very easy, you know, for, want to you know compromise his or her faith so i encourage you not to do that um because we are in those days that the bible talked about the word the scriptures talked about we are seeing every word that was spoken concerning the times you know uh, and the seasons that we are in or the season that we are in um we are seeing every word that was prophesied concerning this day um these days you know we are seeing it unfold itself before our you know, I, so you just keep going and keep pushing because the day of the Lord is near and, um, no matter what happens, don't you ever sell your conscience and, um, just keep being faithful, you know, in the things of the spirit. Amen. So today I'm talking about uncompromising faith in the face of adversity. Amen. Uncompromising faith. What is uncompromising faith? It is faith that doesn't bow to the pressures of life. Amen. It is faith that doesn't shake. It is faith that is not intimidated um, by challenging situations or adversity. Uncompromising faith is faith that doesn't bow. Amen. In the face of ad adversity. In other words, um, it is faith that stands still to do what? To see the salvation of the Lord. Uncompromising faith is faith that stands the test of time. And as a believer, never you expect it to be all smooth. You know, as long as you are here on earth, even Jesus Christ, our Lord, didn't have a smooth while he was here. Yes, he was tempted. He was tested. He was hated. He was criticized. He was persecuted. And not to forget, he was crucified. Amen. But the truth is that no matter how tough or unpleasant things look, you can always be rest assured that God will make... um out a way of escape for you so be sure to trust the process you know just trust the process knowing that as a covenant child of god that the refining process or difficult moments you experience will do what will produce for you an eternal weight of glory amen it is to bring god what the highest praise and to bring him glory and honor amen like you know, I wouldn't say anything without backing it up with scriptures. So I will be taking um, an example from the scriptures. Amen. The three young Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We all know the story. Who were taking words into captivity. You know, they were taking captives into Babylon, a foreign land. In the third chapter of the book um, of Daniel, we see them, you know, left with an option. An option of either... And bowing to a strange god, a golden image set up by King Nebuchadnezzar, or being thrown into what a blazing furnace. Amen. They had um, a choice to make. 
to either bow in the face of adversity or cling towards their faith. It was actually um, a compromising state or situation that these young men found themselves in. But the fact that they trusted God even to the point where they came face to face with it, that was the highlight. Amen. I love what they said to King Nebuchadnezzar. If you, if you read it down, the book of Daniel chapter 3, maybe we'll go into the scriptures, but briefly, you know, because it's, it's a long story, but we'll just pick a few verses, you know. But I love what they said to um, King Nebuchadnezzar before they were thrown into the blazing furnace, you know. Um, we will read it, but before we go there, the book of Jan, uh, Daniel 3, 17 and verse 18. But before we go into scriptures, I want you to know that the fact that you were going through some difficult moments doesn't make you less a child of God. That is not a proof that you are not grounded in the faith. Amen. It is called what? A trial of your faith. Job was tested. Job's faith was tested. Daniel's faith was tested. Abraham's faith was tested as well. Even the disciples of Jesus Christ, they went through tough times or challenging situations as well. But what makes it beautiful when a child of God goes through what difficult moments is his or her ability, you know, to, not to compromise or lose his or her praise. Amen. That ability, you know, not to compromise or lose your praise in the midst of adversity, that is what makes it beautiful for you as a child of God. The word of God in the book of Isaiah 43 verse 2, what does it say? It says, when you pass through what fire, you will know what be consumed. It says, when the flames, you know, when you go through fire, sorry, it says the flames will not set you ablaze. He says, and when you go through the waters, I, who? God, he said, I, the Lord, I will be with you. And when you also go through the rivers, he says, they will not sweep over you. In other words, you will not get drowned. So what does the fire and the water or rivers stand for or represent? They represent the trying moments, the afflictions, the oppression, the difficulties of life, the hurdles you need to jump through. As long as you are here. The word of God makes us to understand in Isaiah 43 verse 2. He says, when you go through those challenging times, they will not consume you. Hallelujah. The, the word of God is trying to say, when you pass through those trying moments, the trial of your faith, you will not be consumed. In other words, you will not be destroyed. Why? Because I, the Lord, I will be with you or I am with you. I am with you to deliver you from it. Amen. So if we, if we go down to, uh, you know, if we go back to the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, you know, these three young men who were taken into captivity in a foreign land, you know, if, if we go back to their story, they were in a foreign land. So I am saying to you right now, I don't know where you are right now or at what point you are in your life right now and what you are faced with. But one thing is certain, and I don't know what you are going through, but the truth is that God has you covered. He said, I will be with you when you go through the waters, when you pass through the fire, when you go through the rivers. God said, I will be with you so that you will not be consumed, so that you will not be destroyed. I will be there to preserve you. I will be there to keep you. Amen. I will be there to pull you through. Amen. I will be there to give you the victory. Amen. I will be there. Hallelujah. To take the greater glory. That's what he was trying to say. I will be with you, irrespective of what you go through. Amen. So God's got you covered. God is for you and never against you. I want you to know that. That you can always do what? Count on God's love to tide you over the storms of life, the difficulties, the challenges, etc. Just trust the process. For it is going to do what? To bring God the greatest glory, just like it came through for the three young men. Amen. Because of what? Their uncompromising faith. They will not bow to adversity. They will not bow to a, 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 a strange God. They were not ready to bow to an image. They were not ready to bow to other gods. And because of their uncompromising faith, what happened? 
God preserved them. So I want you to know that you can trust God and trust the process. God will bring you out of it so that he can bring him what the greatest glory. Just like he came through for these young men because of their uncompromising faith, it will also come true for you as well if you keep the faith. Amen. So I would like us to quickly go um, into the book of Daniel chapter 3 from uh, verse 4 to, to the end. But let's see. So from verse 4, if, if we read from verse 4 down, we see where um, the decree was given, you know, that at the sound of um, the horn, the flute, um, the zeta, um, the lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music instrument that they should all fall down before the graven image and worship it. Um, then if you go to verse 8, it says, At this time, some astrologers did what they came forward and denounced the Jews. And they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, these were the men who now came to report um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they didn't bow, you know, to, to the God. You know, when the decree was made, because the decree was made and immediately that was done, these three men refused to bow, you know. So, um, they came forward to King Nebuchadnezzar to report this young man. I just want us to quickly go down. You know, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, they are reporting now to the king. Your majesty, they neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Amen. I want you to know this. The devil will always look for something to use against you as a child of God. And it is the fact that you won't bow to the system of this world. You will not bow to anything that will not bring God glory. Amen. The devil will always look for something to use against you as a child of God. And that will always be your faith. And that is why you shouldn't compromise your faith. Amen. So if you, go, they, they, you know, reported to the king and... You know, the king was like, if you go down, you see the king asking the three young men, is it true that you didn't serve the God, uh, uh, my God, you don't serve my God, and also the image I have set up. Then if we go down, okay, let's go down. It says, um, yeah, it says, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? He was asking them, what God will rescue you from my hand? Then if you go down to 16, let's see. Okay, now the young man said to him, when he said that, when the king said that, he said, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if, oh God, this is so beautiful. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not bow. We will not serve your gods. And we will not worship the image of God you have set up. Amen. Faith that is not, you know, going to bow in the face of adversity. This young man had what? Uncompromising faith. Faith that will not be intimidated. Amen. Because they know the God that they serve. They know who's got their back. Amen. They know that the supreme God was always with them. So even if, they said, even if we will not bow, this is the kind of faith as a child of God you should have. Irrespective of what is happening, do not bow. Irrespective of how what is happening don't lose your praise irrespective of what is happening don't just give up on god amen hallelujah so if you go down they didn't bow and what happened they were thrown into the blazing furnace so let's see what happened in verse 24 then the king nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors wherein the three men that we tied up and threw into the fire they replied certainly your majesty yes so they were three men. And he said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. The fourth man was with them. Amen. Glory be to God. The fourth man was there to preserve them. Glory be to God. The fourth man was there to, you know, 
keep them, prevent them from being what? Burnt by fire. The, the fourth man was there to do what? To keep them from being consumed. Amen. The, the, the fourth man was there to do what? To preserve their lives. God was with them. Jesus, the Son of God, was with them right there. Because the neighbor says something. He said, the face, hallelujah. He said, the, the, the fourth man looks what? Like a son of the gods. He was trying to say he looks like the son of God. Because he wasn't a believer, he said the son of the gods. But that was the fourth man, the fourth man that preserves, the fourth man that protects, the fourth man that keeps, the fourth man that will not allow you to be consumed by the works of the wicked. Amen. So the Bible says, what happened? He now brought them out. And when he brought them out, if you read... um. Uh, verse 28 and 29 what happened we see god being exalted amen we see god taking the glory like i said whatever you're going through as a child of god is to bring god the greater glory and in verse 30 what happened we see this young man being promoted because their victory was sure amen so i want you to understand something there that god didn't stop them from being thrown into the fire and God didn't show up to stop the process for a reason. God did not show up to stop them from being thrown in there. Why? Because he was about to prove his supremacy. He was about to prove himself to those who don't believe. Oftentimes, the things you go through as a child of God is for those who don't believe to see and know. When, 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 when you know you finally overcome, when the victory is given to you by God, so that you will not take the glory, rather the glory will be given to God. So. God did not stop it from happening. Sometimes in our life, maybe we are complaining. You're going through that thing and you're like, why didn't God just stop this from happening? It happened for a reason. Amen. Look at what happened to Lazarus. He didn't stop him from dying. Jesus didn't stop him from dying. But he was there right on time. God is never late. He is always right on time. So God didn't stop these three men from being thrown into the fire. But he showed up at the appropriate time. God will show up on your behalf at the appropriate time. God will show up on your behalf, you know, at the right time. So that he will take the glory. So if you read down, you know, from 28 down, we see how Nebuchadnezzar gave God the glory. You know, he told the, the whole congregation that from henceforth, everybody should serve the God of um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That if they don't do that, they will face, you know, um, there was going to be um, like a repercussion. If, if, if they don't do that, you know, they were going to be punished. Amen. So, Thetis, um, let's go down, uh, verse 30, yes, verse 30 says, Then the king did what? Promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hallelujah. In the province of Babylon. So they were promoted, you know, when their victory was sure. So I don't know what you're passing through right now, but if you keep the faith, the fourth man will show up on your behalf. The fourth man will keep you from, from being consumed. He will keep you safe and unharmed. The fourth man will see you through that you may know that God is God. Amen. And you may not know how and you may not know when, but it will come true for you because God has not changed and God will never change. That same God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he is still God and he is still, you know, the one who is reigning, hallelujah, in your life, reigning in every situation of your life. So that same God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he will, you know, see you through whatever it is that you are going through. If you read the book of 2 Corinthians 4, um, verse 17 to 18, it says something. It says, for our light and momentary troubles, in other words, our afflictions, our light and momentary troubles, they are achieving. In other words, they are producing, they are yielding for us what? An eternal glory that far what outweighs them all. In other words, the glory that whatever you're going through will produce, whatever will come out of it will be far better than whatever it is that you have been through. Amen. In other words, the end result of what, you know, you pass through will be better and greater than whatever it is that came your way. Hallelujah. To take you off, you know, 
your cause. Amen. Then if you go down to 18 verse 18 in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is what temporary, amen. But what is unseen is what eternal. In other words, those things that are seen, they are not eternal, but those things that are unseen are eternal. So I leave you with these words. Refuse to fix your gaze on the problems. Refuse to fix your gaze on those light afflictions. The Bible says they are light and they are momentary. In other words, um, it is for a moment. It is for a period, you know, set period of time. Hallelujah. They are not eternal. They, they are not permanent. They are just a passing phase. Amen. So refuse to set your gaze on those negativities, on the issue, on those issues of life, those trials. But fix your gaze on what? On Jesus. Fix your gaze on who? Jesus. Just keep looking to his wonderful face. Trust me, the cares of this life will all prostrate to you in the light of his glory and his grace. If you keep the faith, those things you are passing through, whatever it is you are going through, the cares of this life, they will bow to you in the light of God's glory and His grace. Those light afflictions, they are only for a season. Amen. They are not eternal. Just fix your gaze on Jesus Christ. So I will be praying for you as I end it up now. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus today that no matter what comes your way, you will not be found in a compromising state. You will not sell your conscience for any reason. And that you will stand for holiness. You will stand for righteousness. That you will stand even when friends are gone. Stand for your faith. When the heat is on. Stand when the chips are down. Keep the faith when all hope is gone. And it looks like there's no way out. I pray in the most powerful name of Jesus Christ. That you will walk in the consciousness. That the fourth man is looking out for you. Every minute every hour, every day, every month and year, and all the days of your life. In Jesus' most powerful name, you will not be ensnared by the trap of the devil. You will not be ensnared by the trap of the adversary. And no matter how many times the adversary heats up the blazing furnace for your sake, you will not be consumed. You will come out preserved and victorious. And God alone will take the glory like he did in the case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Remember, that same God is still God. And He remains faithful. God bless you. Do not bow in the face of adversity. Do not give up on God and do not quit on God. Keep holding on and keep trusting God. Remember, the day of the Lord is at hand. Keep the faith. Don't lose your faith. Nothing in this world is worth losing your soul for. God bless you. And I leave you with these words. Don't bow in the face of adversity. Don't compromise your faith in the face of adversity. God loves you and I love you. And I will see you in my next video. God bless you and thanks for listening. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. I love you.